Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Today what we shall be doing is something a little bit different. We're going to be making a tool. Now we're going to be using this, I don't know how long this is, but it's about three quarter by three quarter inch square stock. We're going to be using this, probably about half an inch by half an inch circular stock. And what we're going to be making is we're going to be making a spring fuller. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our three quarter inch uh, square block and we're going to start upsetting it. Now for those who don't know what upsetting is, basically taking a long, thinner piece of metal and compressing it down so it's shorter and wider. Now some of you may remember if you watched my um, snakehead hook video, you want to see it's either in the, in the description or top right corner. Yeah, but it's just taking a long thin piece, compressing it down, making it wider. Because at the moment this piece doesn't quite fit in the hardy hole, and I want it as a hardy hole tool. So I'm going to compress it, make it wider so it fits the hardy hole nice and flush. So when I weld the rod onto it, that's nice and flat against the amp. Taking down these mushroom edges where they're just mushroomed over, so it's still nice and square. Back and forth, crap. We've made a little bit of progress now, so my phone cut out, we ran out of storage space, so made a little bit of progress. as big as this hardy hole. If we make it that thick, um, then there'll be a very little amount of length to it. We want a good amount of length so it stays in the hardy hole. What I might do is I'll just make, take a few more heaps of it, press it a little bit more, just so it's all right in there. There's a little bit of movement, but so just so it's all right in there. So it's not as liable to come out. I'm not going to make it as big as the hardy hole. Okay, so I'm going to um, plan it, this out, straight out, take all the mushroom stuff out of it, um, and see how well it fits. It's not going to fit perfectly because it's still too small um, crossways, um, but it will fit better than it did. Um, Hopefully it'll be big enough so it doesn't easily slot out with the hardy hole when it's being pinned. We've just got it all flattened out, roughly straightened out. May well need a quick, quick go on the grinder just to flatten everything out before we weld anything onto it. Just give it a nice cool off. So, a lot better than it was in there. Because it was moving around like this. And it was about yay long. So we've taken it down almost a half. Um, yeah, it should work nicely because it. I'm not going to be able to get it the same size as this and have enough material lengthwise to keep it in there so if I keep this much material there's an ample amount of material there just to keep it in there and the width of it should hopefully also contribute to keep it in there as well Okay. 
So the reason why the piece to the hardy hole now fits is because after I actually said that it um, isn't going to fit because if I, if I made it too fit then it'd be too short, is that um, I figured it out and I could actually make it short enough to be put in the hardy hole and thick enough. So we've, um, as you saw, heated up, we just cooled it off and it's just got rid of all those shiny bits that sort of made it all blend in with each other nicely. So we'll, um, once we get it all together and forged out and welded together, we'll give it everything clean off with the um, wire brush just so it looks nice and clean. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, get the piece of metal for the actual spring fuller that we were going to use. We were going to chop it to prepare it but it was, I think I accidentally hardened it um, earlier on. So I've heated it up, it's out there now um, naturally cooling down. Right, so what I'm doing here is I've got this block of steel here which is going to go oops, sorry, into the hardy hole here and that's just going to brace the tool down into the hardy hole. So what I'm going to do with this um, circular rod of metal here is we've got our circular piece, let's draw a little dog in there, we've got a little circular piece. What we're going to do is going to get our middle bit, flatten it out so that it's this is very rough drawings, forgive me. So flattened out in the middle. Once we've done that, we're going to bend it round, hopefully over a little bit. This part here acts as a spring, and this part in here is where you slot the piece in, and you hammer on top of this part, and that creates a indent in both sides, I'll focus it up for you. Okay, it's an indent in both sides of the piece. So that's what we're going for. We're gonna weld the block uh, block of metal that we upset here. So that 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 is going into the um, hardy hole. going to do now is what I'm doing is I'm using a technique with the hammer as I'm coming down I'm drawing back with the hammer to spread um, this piece out here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it on the same the other side because it's not quite central. I'm going to just as I'm hammering down come back with it. That should just draw that edge out a little bit more just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and central. There you go, a little spring, and um, obviously you slot your piece in here, hammer onto that bit there, and it squashes the bit in between there. So uh, now I'll clean up uh, where I'm pieces where I'm going to weld, and then we should have a fully functioning spring filler. So what we're going to do now. We're going to use this stone grinder on here to create a groove, a depression in the metal here for that to slot into so we can uh, weld it a little bit easier. So we've done this piece and we know that fits. Put it on. That ain't bad. No spring load on it. All I'm going to do is if I've cleaned up these bits here, I haven't taken them fully round, but I've just taken all the sticky out bits there. And all I'm going to do now is because it's shiny, we're going to do what, like we did before, stick it in the forge, heat it up to a orangey temperature, and 
that when we quench it should um, take the shininess out of it and blend it all in. So, got it all cleaned up, so now, going to nice and simply boil it up. So we've boiled it up, now there is just one final step. Now, with this, I think is a very nice piece for our first time round. I think I've done a reasonably good job on this. It's a little bit uh, kilted, but come on, doesn't it? I cry, I've spilt milk, so put a touch mark on here. Um, quite hours liking it, but I've got half of this. Uh, got a little indentation there, so that'll do. We've got the JS touch mark in there. We are just about done. That'll be it for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. I had an absolute whale of a time making this. It was absolutely brilliant. I used, got to use some really nice old blacksmithing techniques, such as the upsetting on this, um, which was really, really, really nice to do. Um, yeah, for a first attempt, I don't think it's too shabby, to be honest. Yeah, let me know what you thought down, down in the comments. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Turn notifications on so you do not know do not miss out on any new videos and I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.